Hello there. Hi, Lily. Hi, Katie. How are you doing? I'm doing alright. How are you doing? Ah, uh, that was very joy-like from friends. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> don't make me blush. How are you doing? <laughs> It works every time. Um, not too bad, not too bad. Um, it's a it's a wonderful day to be alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna soon introduce our very special guest. Uh, but first, please introduce our wonderful podcast. Absolutely. Hi everyone. Welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie, and that is the joyous Lily Kay. Ah, oh, and that is the lovely Katie. And I am not Troy Baker. I am Troy <laughs> Faker. Uh, <laughs> that has to be said. And um, yeah, welcome. Um, Katie, if yeah, you uh, our our guest today is a uh, part of a, just a little show. Um, you might recognise him uh, if you've been watching it for long. Well. It's um, if you wanted to come on in, Desmond Chain. All right. Ha. Ha. Hi. <laughs> there we go. Oh? The miracle of technology. I have appeared. Absolutely perfect. It, How it you doing today? Perfectly. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's been an easy day. I'm taking ah. Oh, I'm great. I just got vaccinated. Everything's great. Oh, amazing. Up. Yeah. Oh, nice. What kind of vaccine did you get? <laughs> I, it's an important the, question nowadays. One. I got the Moderna <laughs> one. I re- highly recommend. Yeah, I didn't even feel it, man. I just they, He was like, hey, look at that tree. And I was like, what tree? And then he was like, hey, you're done. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, good. Very okay. easy distracted. Yep, me too. Hmm. Um, um, <laughs> I got the Pfizer and I was like, I was the same. I was like, great. Uh, did it happen already? It yeah, did? Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> oh, man. So, so yeah. everyone go get vaccinated, please. I'm the only peon who hasn't been vaccinated yet, but that's just because the government hasn't sent it to me yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, yeah, we had to wait for it to open up for us too. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Um, so we're going to, you know, uh, we're going to do what podcast do, which... We don't know how it works, <laughs> but we can going to figure it out. <laughs> I don't think we're doing this for like 20 something episodes at this point. We still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think, uh, do you want to go first, Katie, or do you want me to go um, first? Yeah, I'll go first. Hang on, I'm yeah, going to get okay. my questions up now because I've got them all written down. I, we I, are I very well prepared. I was going to have them on my screen, but my, <laughs> my screen is currently lighting me and the, the, the thing I've written it on is uh, in dark mode. So I would just oh, yeah. disappear if I do that. So we'll have to go Quite over cool here. You just emerge from the darkness. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm on set. <laughs> Um, I think we should start with something a little bit generic and say what uh, you're because we're a we're a film and TV kind of podcast here, and I was wondering yeah. what your kind of your entertainment poison is how I wrote it down. Ooh, so are you like a TV tempted. guy or a film guy? Or are you like a theater guy? Or... I started as a TV guy. You know, I, I really I really enjoy TV. I am not as hardcore a film guy as, as some people are, but in recent years I have become. Um, not recent years, God, last like decade or so, but I really grew up a TV household. You know, we'd watch The Simpsons and all that stuff. And, and me and my, I remember I have, I have fond memories of me and my mum, and this is a weird one, but me and my mum watching Community. Oh, oh hell yeah. Oh, together. yes. <laughs> uh, she was like the one old person who kind of like got it. She wasn't mm-hmm. a kid. So, um, so yeah, she loved, she loved that show. And we just sit there and watch it over and over and over again. We had all like the DVD box sets and stuff. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah excellent choices That's like come on simpsons very, very I, good, yeah. <laughs> I grew up in the south park which is huh. south park's great too yeah it's great but you know when you're 14 it's a bit like <laughs> too much <laughs> no, I, feel like, no, I feel like south no, park no. when you're 14 is either the best thing in the world or you're like yeah. jesus christ <laughs> yeah 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 it's one of the two truly truly like this is amazing or i need religion it's, it's one of the two it's it's one of the two definitely like i i i remember uh you know sneaking down to watch it because it was obviously after midnight uh, or something like that and i sneaked down yep. and i was like oh i am so badass because i am watching south park and you know and then it turned out that all my friends were watching it as well and i was like oh sh- <laughs> no, but it's an experience though. You took agency. You went. You crept downstairs. You watched the show. Like that's part of the experience of the South Park thing, man. Like it's it's that rebelliousness. Yeah, and now I just sit down and I watch it, so it's not that exciting anymore. Yeah, yeah. You, you, it loses something in the translation to adulthood. Yeah. yeah, I didn't really grow up with South Park, but The Simpsons, obviously, in the UK, um, anybody who kind of grew up around the time I did, it was just always on Channel 4 in the evening. Yeah. Six o'clock, Channel 4 had set, yeah. The Simpsons on. Uh, yeah. So it's like you just put the TV on. It's like, oh, there's another episode that maybe I have yeah. or haven't seen. Pretty much the same in, in Australia as well. Like you, But hey, you're in the UK, right? You would have gotten Neighbours. 
Of yeah, course, but I'm like, Neighbors is on Channel 5, and people don't tend to really watch Channel 5. Fair enough. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That makes sense about where, where it's gone. But I know of <laughs> Neighbors, so there's that. <laughs> I'm so surprised when people know of... I didn't know it was a huge thing in the UK. I only got told that recently. Erin, hmm. Erin, on the show. Um, and she's like, oh my god, Neighbors. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm so sorry, I guess. I apologize. <laughs> Yeah, one of the many sort of ones like uh, Channel Five has cut a lot of the imports, uh, so like yeah, you'll get a lot right. of the sort of crime dramas that get end up, end up on Channel Five and that sort ah, of stuff. I see, I see. Uh, so yeah, Neighbours was uh, one of one of those ones, but uh, you know, didn't really watch Channel Five. No, hey, you must have bought good on you. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm off so many Australians right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is our religion. <laughs> Make better TV, Australia. No, they are nowadays. ABC is doing some good work, but. Oh, there are you know. some really good Australian TV shows out there and movies as well. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, the movie world is—they're crushing it now. There are. There's a big um, industry uh, popping off in in Australia at the moment, right? Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. I mean, they shot. They shot. Um, oh, I don't know if I can say that. I won't say that. But they did shoot. They shot like <laughs> Mortal Kombat there. They shot like um, the Aquaman and and pirates oh. and. Uh, I shot a, a. I had to go all the way back home for a TV series, an, an American TV series that I led. Um, sent me all the way back to Australia to shoot in Queensland. Oh, that must so, have been nice. Yeah, it was, that was not. It was super, super nice. Um, except I didn't see anyone because I'm I'm from <laughs> Melbourne, which is further down south. Right. And I kept. I was like, oh, I'm going to visit, and then our filming schedule was insane, and I couldn't leave. And none of my friends, my, all my friends, were like, "No, we'll, we'll come up and see you." And I was like, "No, no, I'm coming to Melbourne to visit you." <laughs> and then I never did, and I didn't see anyone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst uh, it is yeah. the worst uh yeah. which uh, begs the question how did it all start for you like you know how did were you the theater kid who always wanted to do this or was it something uh, that came in a bit later on or uh, uh, yeah later for sure i mean I, i came in late to the game um i was not i i didn't know that people and i'm not exaggerating when i say this i mean this hyper literally <laughs> um i cannot emphasize this enough I did not know that creative careers existed. I thought you had to have another job and then also do that thing as a hobby because I didn't know you could get paid. Like I thought directors like worked as something else and then like every now and again on their holidays did like a film. That literally was my understanding of the world from about one to like 17, 18. Um, we, we, we were a very one track family for me. And again, I'm not going to, I don't want to lean into the stereotype because this, this is not as common as you would think in our community. But for me, the only choices were medicine, law or commerce or engineering. If mm. you really had to stretch it. Um, and preferably electrical engineering, like not mechanical, like don't, you know, let's, mm. let's get. Let's get, not get it twisted. So it was only when I, I took an exchange year to the States in 2008, mm-hmm. um, big year. That's the year I met my wife, now wife. Um, oh, and also the year where I met a bunch of people because I, I got into the dance scene over there. And in the dance scene, I met a lot of uh, kids in college who were like, I want to be a photographer and I want to be a videographer. And like, I want to be a writer. And like, no one laughed at them. So <laughs> that's not a real career. What are you talking about? Yeah, I was like, what do you, what do you mean? You can't get paid doing these things. Like, go be an accountant. Um, so yeah, that was literally when it, it clicked for me. I was like, I don't have to be a lawyer. I was studying law at the time. Mm. Um, and I, I wasn't liking it. I wasn't enjoying it. I wasn't liking it at all. Um, in Australia, they do this thing. I think, yeah, they, it, it's the same as the UK. And, and the, you go into like law or medicine or engineering, all that stuff, it's undergrad as opposed to the US, which is kind of like you do it postgrad. Right. That mm. means you're making the decision at like 16, 17. You don't know. It was yeah. just, the, I was like, oh, I'm vaguely good at English. I kind of like humanities subjects. I guess law is the closest thing out of these three choices that I'm allowed to do that I'll do. And I hated it. Um, I didn't realize I hated it for a long time. But by the time I got to my fifth, sixth year, I was like, this sucks. And then I worked as a lawyer for three months. And I was like, this still sucks. It didn't change. Why was I thinking it would change? So I quit and had no idea what I was doing. Mm. And I was lucky enough to be friends with a few other Australian guys who were actors, um, you know, I, I met in the interim. And they sort of bit by bit encouraged me to, you know, not necessarily encouraged to be like, hey, you should do this. But they, I was hanging out with them and they're like, hey, we have tapes to do. Can you help us like read and like film this? Just man the camera. And actually, you know what? You go in front of the camera and you say some stuff now too. And we'll send it to the casting director. We're not meant to do that. But we'll just do it anyway because, like, we're chill with them. And off that, I booked like a commercial. And then from there, I was like, hey, 
I can make a living doing this. I can, I can do this. And that was at that point I was like, okay, I'll book into a class and like do it seriously. I'll start looking for a proper agent. And that was where that all sort of started, you know, after, out of that complete, you know, uh, mid, not midlife, but, you know, early late. life crisis. Yeah. <laughs> early life crisis. I feel like, I feel like being a millennial is just a, just a concatenation of crises. Yeah. Just stack one think... other, is that we just you end one and then you go up. straight into a new one. And yeah. it's like about something yeah. slightly different, but equally. No. Is... <laughs> exactly, but <laughs> equally like, completely different skill set. So you have to learn everything from the ground up again to mm-hmm. deal with it. Uh, but, uh, but it's a new one and you have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So yeah, that was that was my entry point. Um, ah, that's. I yeah. mean, I I kind of imagined you because before you came in, that you know you were like the theater kid, and it was just a natural thing for you. So oh, you surprised oh. me. I was like, oh, okay. I, mean. <laughs> I wish, I wish, I wish I started uh, earlier. I wish I started earlier. Trust yeah. me, it it doesn't change much. Like you know, I've been doing this for like. <laughs> I, since I was 10, something like that. And uh, now I am uh, the proud owner of the name, the Sean Bean of Extras, because <laughs> I literally die in everything. Like, I'm not even joking. <laughs> <laughs> I also die in a lot of things. Like, most you of like, Shannara, <laughs> Shannara, and, uh, and, and, and like, it just doesn't end badly for a lot of the people. And, and even in, like, I did this, this kooky series called Now Apocalypse, where, like, mm. I didn't die, but my character plays this actor who's just the worst he, he's 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 this obnoxious <laughs> prick and he he's like so proud of all the roles he has like i'm on ncis tonight and i'm on csi and he's just the corpse he's the corpse in all of those shows and he actually shot those so i like had three death scenes in this one show <laughs> i was like my, my my kill death ratio for for shows is like four to two this is how have i died four times i only done two shows like that, that the math doesn't add up Yep. Yeah, I, I know the feeling. I died in yeah. everything. That's a I nice, a nice little bit of practice that you get. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. You know, I'll be one really job, three deaths. Let's go. <laughs> My funeral day. I'm gonna be nailing it, guys. Just <laughs> like, open, I'm gonna be. I'm ready. I'm ready off that. <laughs> oh God, that was morbid, but it's. it's yeah, sorry, <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I love this. It's, it's true. Um, also, there's a rumor that, you know, if you die a lot in movies, uh, then you're going to live longer. So I take it. I died like really? 20 times at this point. So you're going to live forever. Yeah. You're, you're eternal. You're I'm, eternal. Now. I'm going to be the captain. Yeah. You, you yeah. just have to deal with it. I'm not as strong, but, you know. Still. No, you are. No, straight up. I'll, 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 I'll catch that. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Uh, and because you mentioned one of my favorite TV shows and I was heartbroken that it got cancelled I was like no why are you doing this to me every single time uh, The Shadow Chronicles uh, oh. and I will uh, well it's not a big spoiler but your character was written for the TV show because he didn't yes. appear in, in, in the books uh, no. so how did that whole thing happen uh, did you just walk in and did you know what were you auditioning for or yeah they they were pretty they, they they were pretty open about that one, you know, because I I came in for season two, so it wasn't yes. like a secret. They they sort of you know it existed. Um, Shannara, I I really enjoyed the books when I was growing up. They mm-hmm. were one of the first fantasy books I read. Um, not the first. The first was like Raymond D. Feist. I think I read his Rift War mm-hmm. series, and then it was uh the the Shannara Chronicles, uh, a couple of those earlier ones. So I sort of had an inkling of the subject matter, and I went in actually for a different character. I went in for um. Uh, for the role that went to Gentry, uh, Garrett Jacks. Oh, yep. Um, and off of that, one of their producers was like, "Hey, we still need this guy. We have another part that we haven't cast. Like, why, let's just let's just ask him to read for Riga and see if it works." And it did. And 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 suddenly, I'm whisked off to New Zealand and working with this amazing crew. Who a lot of them were like ex Lord of the Rings crewmen, and that was really cool seeing their craftsmanship come to life, building sets, building the props, the armor. I'm a nerd, so I love all that stuff. Yeah. Um, it was real, I, I was bugging them so much. I'd, they'd be like, "You don't have a fitting right now. Can you? We have work to do. Can you leave?" And I'm like, "No, I'm just, I'm just here. Don't worry. I'm just. I'm just I, I won't be in your way. I'll just. I'll just look at what you're doing. I want to see." So, uh, it was so much fun. I love that series. It was my. It was pretty much my first gig, um, mm. and that that was really really nice. Uh, the cast on that: Ivana, Marcus, uh, James was hanging around set, even though he was dead. God bless him. I love, I love James. James is the best. Um, Austin and uh, and Aaron. Actually, serendipitously enough, Aaron Jackie Benko, who played the prince in that series, yeah, uh, was in my first ever acting class. 
um yeah yeah we hit it off were they small yeah and then first job he was like he was the one who picked me up from my residence that they put me for the first time to bring me to set he was like ah dude what the heck (laughs) it was really nice it was a lovely experience and I mean, you knocked out Manu Bennett. So I'm like, I was in <laughs> awe. I was like, is that even possible? Someone can knock out him. Nah, man. Nah, he's not. He, he, will, he cannot get knocked out. That fellow is a rock. He's, he's awesome, too. He's a, good, oh, he's a good guy. He gave yep. me a lot of guidance early up in my career, too. You know, um, yep. good fella. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a very good guy. I met with him at Comic Con and he oh, was just the sweetest. Oh, yeah. Just the sweetest. Yeah, like, is, is, come on. <laughs> such a yeah, nice yeah. person um yeah. but yeah i i was i was so bummed out that shanara got cancelled because you know oh, obviously the books as well were close There's to my fun. heart and yeah. then i liked the show i think it was so much fun i think uh, yeah. you know your character was i think it was a refreshment to the whole idea that shanara was and i was like mm-hmm. i was into it because i usually don't like when they change things uh when yeah. they adapt books but uh, but i was like yeah it works <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it, 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 it pretty much worked. I mean, like, look, it was it skewed towards that young adult kind of demographic, yeah. and and but I think in terms of that, they did that well. They set up all the tensions that they needed to. Um, I just am of the opinion that we need like more fantasy on yeah. screen. Like, I just mm-hmm. like that kind of stuff. Obviously, Game of Thrones busts the door down in a big way, but Game of Thrones ain't for everyone, you know. Game of Thrones, even for me, skews a little grim um, to the point of. I don't admit it, Katie. Like... <laughs> no, I, I, I admitted it many times. I couldn't get, get into Game of Thrones. I liked reading all the spoilers for Game of Thrones, but I like watching that. it was a task. Yeah, by by like the third season, I think I was just fatigued, and I was like, I have enough horrible people in my actual real life. I don't want to watch horrible people on on oh. screen. I like. I'm my actually heart. stressed. I'm like, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I think they did it really, really well on an objective level. They executed a fantastic show. Mm. Um, but a little grim, a little grim dark. I'm an optimist. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you there. I, I, I used to really enjoy watching kind of grim dark stuff uh, yeah. when I was yeah. younger, but like Same. over the years, yeah. over the years, it's just like, I don't care. I don't want to watch a bunch of people be mean to each other at this one. I just want to see some yeah. good, good people do I, some nice things. You know, I think we're going to, we, I think we have a trend in TV and, and film mm. coming where I think we're going to see more of that. I think we're skewing away from that now. Um, mm-hmm. and try and bring some more some more hope and optimism and i hope we do because we need it i really hope so <laughs> something happened in 2020 that, that yeah we need it <laughs> yeah that. even though yeah. i i just uh tweeted out not a long time uh, last week it was last week oh it still lives in my memory uh that <laughs> after these marvel shows i'm gonna need therapy like <laughs> like serious ones <laughs> <laughs> yeah having said all that Go watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Feel really good about the state of things. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Especially after uh, this week's episode, the, the most recent episode, as of recording this, four episodes have come out. Yeah. And episode four was a lot to deal with. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> Brutal is the word. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. I mean, um, we could get into a little bit of Falcon and the Winter Soldier because that's sure, obviously please, one yeah. of the big things that's been going on. What was that? You've written a little bit, you've put together this amazing thread, oh, um, yeah. which I, I love reading. Uh, but do you want to speak a little bit more on like what the experience was like? Oh yeah, man, it was, it was incredible. Like I can't, I can't sing the praises well enough from, from, from Marvel itself for the, on the way down to, you know, our three um, female leaders. Uh, we had a mm. female director, we had a female producer and we had a female line producer. Um, made the set just calm and approachable and even though they were spending huge amounts of money i I might be wrong about this but i think at one point or another we were the most expensive tv show Mm. full stop um that doesn't surprise me too much somehow yeah yeah. i mean it it feels like a movie every episode feels like a movie and and um they despite that huge budget and the huge pressure that should come with that it kind of didn't because they just left a real open set it was like nice it was easy you know the moment you're you're an actor and you come on set and you feel that kind of openness it just makes it easy to do your job mm. um anthony mackie and sebastian stan obviously doubled down on that too they had this really easy chemistry with each other it was kind of like oh look you just yeah yeah sure you're just chatting and stuff and we can you know we're all in the same tent we're just like chatting a little bit here and there and just mm. not you know, we don't want to distract each other from our work, but it was it was easy. It was nice and cash. Um, and then, of course, the flag smashes. Like, man, they put us together on the first day, and I think they knew they'd made a terrible mistake. <laughs> <laughs> we were so noisy between takes. Literally, let me paint this picture right. We're in this. We're in a. We're in a plane. We're in a, The set is a plane. Um, 
it's a small light plane, so you know it's it's aluminium and and other rattly kind of metals. And we decide that it's a good idea to start up this little like hip hop cipher. I mean, I think it was Tyler's idea or Reness, one of those guys, like starts beatboxing and then like they're throwing down freestyle rhymes. Then India's like, you know, get it with a bad self. And I'm sitting there being like, I used to be a b-boy, but I can't do this because I'm injuring myself because I'm too old now. <laughs> and like, and Aaron's just sitting there. And this is the scene where like Aaron has to cry. So, <laughs> so this is the first, first scene. And we're all just having this like grand party and Aaron's like, you guys. <laughs> But she was getting on it too. And it was so much fun. We had this instant chemistry with all of each other. We're all like, mate, we're, we're friends now. We miss each other. We still have this little text group that we're, we just send the messages off into. And, oh, man, I miss those guys. It was really, really, really lovely being on, on set with people who are, A, you know, great actors. Um, that's a big mm. part of it too because you, you need that. We're, do, we're here to do a job. We're here to make a good show. Yeah. Um, but, B, like good people. Um. And maybe those two things should be flipped. I think it should be a good people first. Um, we're starting to see a reckoning with that in this industry, but absolutely, but man, good people, like good times. Just so so lucky that I met I met them. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's it, you know you, you always wonder how these uh, Marvel movies and now TV shows are getting made, but I always imagined as being just a big ass party, like. You know, everybody's having fun. <laughs> just enjoying. I mean, ours kind of was. Ours kind of was. Like, we'd, we'd, you know, head down to the hotel bars and stuff. And, like, they'd throw, they'd throw, you know, nights we'd be out on the town. I think that first night, um, Helen lined up our, our line producer, had, you know, did a meet the cast dinner. And then Zoe, our producer, came out with us. And, mm. and, and uh, Daniel Brawl was there, which is cool. He's so chill as well. To, he was hanging out with us in this, like, random karaoke lounge in Atlanta. <laughs> Just being the chillest dude alive. He's really nice. Um, and we're up on stage singing Backstreet Boys. And he's just like, <laughs> that was like, <laughs> it was so much fun. It was and, so and much with, fun. And with his dance. Yeah, yeah. Dancing. yeah with his dance. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's yeah. iconic. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm oh. going to praise that dance forever. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Have, you gone, have you seen the Supercut on YouTube now? They've put I, out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. Good. It's oh. fantastic. Everything it, I read about Daniel Brühl just paints him as this like chaotic creature. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just like pure chaotic energy, like good chaotic energy. Yeah, yeah, like somewhat. There's a degree of it. He's also he's. It's like it, there is an element of calm to him, but yes, mm-hmm. there is an element of also just this ambitiousness that is just kind of like, all right, what are we, what are we going to see next, mate? <laughs> <laughs> I I just yeah. watched an interview with him, and I was like, my jaw hit the floor because he was talking about Chris Hemsworth, and then he was mm-hmm. talking about him and repeated what he said to him, but in his voice, and the switch was like this. And of course, Chris Hemsworth always, you know, digged and said like, hey, seem nervous. Really. Like, what the hell? <laughs> That's wild. There's it's... a lot of good mimics in the MCU, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like... Hiddleston. Hiddleston does. Oh my good. god. <laughs> oh no 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 no! I, I, I'm from now. His Owen Wilson is my favorite one. thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just come on, Cumberbatch right. with with the Wookie uh, noises mm-hmm. that he can do. It's yeah. Just like... Yes. Yeah. I think one of my favorite clips ever is Cumberbatch doing Smaug. You have nice manners for a liar and a thief. The, oh, well, they just oh, came rolling yeah. around on the floor. Yep, yep. Oh, that looks like so much fun. Oh, he was nice. in it. So he was fun. in it, just in the zone, yeah. just doing Smaug. Yeah. Like that the... is an actor. <laughs> yeah, actor. So good. So good. <laughs> oh god you gotta love them you gotta love them all and and yeah. you know you are now part of this team which must feel amazing like uh, as katie mentioned yeah. uh when i read the tweet uh that you made first of all that picture is great i also envy you very much that you have a vibranium in your pocket so i'm like ah. <laughs> but uh, uh-huh. at, at the same time uh i want to highlight two <laughs> things uh one of them is what you wrote about representation. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that uh, for me and for Katie as well, I think we, I can talk in both of our names. I think it's the most important thing in in the film industry, like everywhere. But, uh, you know, especially yeah. something that reaches so many people. And I think yeah. my question would be is that uh, do you think that it's now finally changing and becoming more of a normal thing, like a natural thing to do? Yeah, for sure. I mean, like we took stock even just uh, even a year ago. Um, me and a few, me and a few friends here. Um, mm. uh, 
I forget who it was, it was a bunch of us in a group, but it was, I think it was like me, um, another mate of mine, Chris Pang, who was one of the guys, shout out, who got me into this. He was one of the original OGs, um, Crazy Rich Asians and all that. Uh, and then it was like Remy, Remy He, who's also MCU, and a couple of other guys. We were all chatting and we were like, hey, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. We're all working right now. <laughs> that has never happened. Like five Asian guys, roughly in the same age group category, mm. all working at the exact same time in like decently sized parts. Huh? That that <laughs> truly has never happened before. It's, it's like moments like that that make you realize how far we've come. Mm. There are still moments that make us realize how far we have to go. Oh, yeah. Um, but of course, you know, not, not, not to bring it down. I do want no. to celebrate where we've gone and where the success is, but... The metaphor is right, right? The door is open, mm. but we haven't walked through it yet. We're just starting to, and we have yeah. to make sure the whole group makes it through before it starts to swing close again, because it's a fragile balance that we've won. And, and the African-American community has been, has been tackling this problem for much longer than we have. Um, but the, the, how to get the community in and not leave people behind is, is a tricky one. Mm. Um, it, we had this horrific joke I think that after Crazy Rich Asians came out, we were like, well, let's just wait for the next Asian film to ruin this all. Because the moment they, the moment we have one failure, it, it's done. This whole ride is over. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was real gallows humor. It was kind of like, but it, that hasn't happened. Thank God. Um, but not, not, thank God. Thank the studios and thank the bosses to some degree for, for putting their money where their mouth is. You know, they have said the words. Now they are following through. Could it be better? Always. Um, you know, we do still, as minorities on set, have to go- negotiate certain things mm-hmm. um, that that are easier for actors of other backgrounds to maybe negotiate. I think a good example. This isn't the most. This isn't a professional example, but this is an example of the negotiation that we have to go through in our heads, right? Like when I was in writing school, mm-hmm. um, I remember writing a scene. Uh, the, 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 the challenge was to write a scene set in a, in, in, um, a familiar location. That was it. So one of my classmates wrote a scene in a British tea shop. Um, and I wrote my scene in a, do you guys know what boba bubble tea is? Yep. I know of it. I haven't actually had yeah, it, but I, yeah, I know of it. Yeah. It's, it's like an Asian American, or oh, not Asian American. It's, it's from Taiwan, but it's like mm. a part of the Asian experience. It's, it's it's something that I grew up with and I know very well. And I remember I had three lines of prose describing this tea shop. And my friend who had the English tea shop had three lines of prose describing that tea shop. And my teacher let him, he was fine. He got a pass. But then for me, he was like, I don't see it. I don't see your world. I don't understand it. You haven't described it to me. You haven't, you haven't made this real for me. You have to do a lot more work here, mate. You can't be lazy with your descriptions. And I was like, he just has a slug line that says interior English tea shop and then gets into his scene. So I have to sit here and do another like, you know, five, six, seven, eight lines explaining, constructing this whole world. Mm. That's an example of something systemic that we face. And you face that as an actor too, when you're talking about bringing authenticity of your background to screen. Um, There are things, there are shorthands that other actors can go to for their cultures that don't exist for us yet. Right. Um, So that is something that we're constantly negotiating. And there are some producers that are more receptive to it and some producers that are less receptive to it. Um, and there are some directors who who truly just are unaware of their unconscious bias and are just like, well, no, why can't you just nail it like this guy's doing? I'm like, he's drawing on years and years of screen symbolism and, and the semiotics that mm. I don't have as an actor. You know, you talk about range. Range is embedded in not just the actor, but also the culture that he's acting in. Wow. Um, yeah, that's a good way so of putting that, it. Yep. That's, that's sort of the challenge, I think, that we are on the ground level facing now um, in the industry. Representation, great. We're in there. We're doing the work. Now right. it's how to do it authentically um, and how to do it in a way that is digestible. Because that is, you know what, it's, it shouldn't fall down to us, but it does. Mm. And that's okay. We have mm. to carry that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, um, I, I, I re- well, not too recently, back in 2016, I got mm-hmm. really into Korean filmmaking. And I realized hey. that I... I I enjoyed it more because it was so different than what I was used to. Yeah. And I was yep. like, I kind of need this now in everything. Like, Katie knows that I am oh, yeah. just, <laughs> just... Absolutely loves it. Like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> we converted another one. I don't watch too many K-dramas, but my wife is addicted to, to a lot of K-dramas. My parents as well love it. Oh, dear, like, <laughs> and it's gorgeous. It 
Oh, so please, so no, no, go. Yeah. They're so good. Like, I got into Train to Busan. Like, that was my first thing. Um, hey, yes. Oh, my God. So good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Finally. <laughs> Katie hasn't <laughs> watched it yet. And I am I'm trying to. So, she, she keeps recommending me things. And I'm like, yeah, I'll get to it. And then I rewatch stuff I've seen about a thousand times. Cause I'm, just... <laughs> I'm with you, too. Don't even worry. Like, I've watched Firefly probably like 30 times. Oh, in the pandemic, So, like. We, we love oh, you here, so you can come and host with us from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's something that uh, I actually just wrote an article about why you should start watching Korean movies and TV shows. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, and then you know, just in general, like we have a friend, Elliot, uh, who has a YouTube channel that is completely based on representation and diversity and everything. Uh, yeah. So we had a lot of talk about this uh, over, especially the past few months uh, mm -hmm. and you know i i can kind of see going where it should be where it's gonna be a completely normal thing because why it shouldn't be yeah. you know uh mm -hmm. but at the same time i think katie said it best that it's it's still too slow <laughs> yeah yes yeah yeah but it is accelerating it is accelerating it is. and i think that's good yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm holding this, this clip in my. I didn't mean to gesture with like this weird object. It's a hair Some, clip. Sometimes you just need something to like to punctuate make your the point, point with. Yeah. And I chose a hair clip. It works. Yeah, it works. It, it works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I said that as we were talking, having a discussion uh, about some of the bigger studios and how I thought that mm -hmm. um, it's it's really at this point the job of people who have a kind of an innate audience like a really large audience mm. to build that kind of representation in from the ground up as opposed to just kind yeah. of tacking it on being like oh we need some people in here let's get like this guy and this guy to kind of fill a quota and like yeah. it needs to be built into the world of what you're doing it doesn't necessarily need to be like about you know mm -hmm. like i think uh, there are so many people who are just sick to death of watching tragedies about uh racism and all that sort of stuff yeah. like we want to be able to yeah. see the joy of the of, of people as well yes that's the big thing absolutely absolutely we are we, we you know anyone any group of people is not just one thing right yeah. there are there's multiplicity of stories and i think that's something to circle back to marvel black panther mm -hmm. did incredibly well absolutely you know what i mean that 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 i think is a master class of you can be many things mm -hmm. you are mm -hmm. not you are not a monolith um and that's a really important thing to acknowledge in, in the diversity fight as well because the moment you I mean, there is unity is important, but there is a point at which if you buy into the monolith, people get left behind and you're just setting you're setting the stage for another type of discrimination in the future. Right. Right. So nothing is a monolith. Every every person must be considered and, and not not one soul sort of left behind. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that the the show's actually doing a really good job of having that kind of conversation mm. built in to it yes. with the entire storyline that's going on with Sam and his relationship to the shield and what that means to the black community um yeah. and like why he won't take it and like and uh, on a level like why uh, um like Bucky's inability to see beyond his like love for Steve and his, like his relationship to Steve in the shield like yeah. there's a there's a whole world that he's not seeing and i really like that that yeah. conversation is built like built in to yeah. the yep. kind of structure of the narrative yep of course yeah and at the same time you have you know aaron on the other side who's yep. another you know potential um end point for the super soldier question right you know she's taken the serum um yep. she's, she's mixed you know from the uk as well uh so there's, again, it acknowledges that there's a version where this show is made earlier in history and they're like, oh, no, we can't cast a mixed person there. Um, the message gets confusing, but it's like, no, no, you, you can. Again, it's all everyone has a different approach to things. Mm. Um, so that I think is at least very, very, very interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree. Like you said, it's all it's all very much built in. Mm -hmm. And then they can orbit the big set pieces and the and the character drama around all that. And, that and, that and, is one of the things I just love about it is the fact that it's yeah. all like I think when you build um, theme into character, it yeah. kind of explodes out of everything else that you try to do. Like yeah. you can't separate anything from anything else because it is so kind of intrinsically tied together. So like you yeah. talk about what Sam's going through, what the flag smashers are going through, and it's like well everything connects together. Yeah. like no matter how much you want, want to like maybe put something as like a like oh this thing happening and also this thing is happening it's like no 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 these two things are very intensely tied through theme and Absolutely. yeah i think that yeah. 
I'm just, I'm just really enjoying it. <laughs> oh, yes. That's the purpose. That's the purpose. We're, we're here to entertain you. <laughs> no, we made a TV show to annoy you. Um, no, good, good. I, that, sometimes you watch TV shows yeah. and you're like, you, this does feel like you made this to annoy me. <laughs> Our examples for that, <laughs> that's for sure. But like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, uh, definitely. I, I, I think uh, with what Marvel is doing right now, is I think it's the best tactic. To be honest, like, yeah. absolutely well done. Uh, I can't wait to see Shang Chi, uh, which yes. should be coming out in the summer. Yeah, soon, soon. I have made. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna be great. Simu yep. is a good person. He I'm seems like one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be sick. And there's a great cast as well. Ronnie jumping in. Me and Ronnie went to law school together back in the oh, day. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, it's, it's connected, all this connected stuff. But yeah, yeah they're, they're going to do really, really well. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I am I'm predicting in my head, uh, a, hopefully a similar success that uh, Black Panther had. Um, I hope so. So fingers, fingers crossed. crossed. If, if yeah. the uh, cinemas are going to be open in here, then I will um, definitely... Yeah, anyway. Yeah, I'll running it that immediately. <laughs> yeah, like, <Yep. laughs> and it's it's. Once I get the second and... shot, I'm going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I think we can step into my weird questions, which is, Ooh, you know, okay. I love weird questions because I, really I love am weird. I love, I love weird questions too. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so let's imagine a scenario where you can step into any word that was created in a big franchise like Harry Potter, uh, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, oh. anywhere, which word would you choose and why? Any world. Any word. In any film or TV franchise. Yep. Well, definitely not The Walking Dead. <laughs> um, why? You know, that's fair. That <laughs> <laughs> I just like to take showers. Like everything else is fine. You know there's what? Else in that world. Also, fast. that's that's very like very good reason. <laughs> um, there's nothing else in that world that would dissuade me from stepping into it. No. Ah, um, <laughs> oh, gosh, that's a that's a tough question because because there's so much conflict in all these worlds. Like Star Wars is cool, but it is also Star Wars. I'm entering a war zone. Yeah. Um, ooh, 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 you know what? You know what? Not my and Lord of the Rings would be cool too. Mm-hmm. Except, again, the shower question comes up. There's lakes. <laughs> <laughs> there's lakes. There's lakes. That's true. That's true. That's true. No zombies. Uh, so you know, it's a bit look, easier. If I had to go into the Lord of the Rings world, it would have to be. It would have to be in the elf <gasps> corner of the world for yes. sure. The continent that they leave to. I'm, I'm there. Mm, but uh, it's so pretty. <laughs> I think. Okay, the logical, the logical answer to this question. Because even though I love all these worlds, I don't know if I'd want to live with them. I think the logical answer to this question is Star Trek. <gasps> you know, yeah, and I think you're not, right there. It's not my favorite new world. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm a Star Wars fan. I'm not huge. I'm not a huge Trekkie. Sorry, Savvy, my wife. <laughs> she's, she, she's like the, her first convention was a Star Trek convention. Um, there you go. But they, yeah, Star Trek. Like it would be cool to just kind of live on the USS whatever like mm -hmm. any of them and and well maybe not the ones that are covered by the shows but one of the more like like the easy assignments you know what i mean they're just on patrol of a really nice tropical eden <laughs> planet and they just have to keep an eye on it and you know beam down every now and again and check it out and make sure nothing crazy is going on hang it on the beach for a while and then beam yeah, back yeah. up to the ship yeah. where they have quality of life they have a hollow deck they can go anywhere yeah that's that's the guy that's a, I think I that's mean, a very smart yeah. answer. Yeah, it's it's a good choice, and uh, you know there are so many good people in there. That, you know, Mr. Spock. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. Ah. Uh, come mate, on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Speaking of logic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, come on. Um, okay. Let's let's make the question a bit more harder. So it's well, no. it's 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 kind of a similar question, but a bit uh -oh. changed. So you can take over the place of any character in Ooh. any franchise. Who would be the character? And obviously, in which franchise would you take it over from? Any character in any... Basically a dream franchise. role. We can't, we can't say it like that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to completely abandon my logic of the last, of the last one. Because that, that, just leads, that just leads to boring answers. I'd be like, <laughs> I don't know, I would take over the, the, the Emperor of China from Mulan or something. Um, but, but no, 
Uh, mm, 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 mm. I would jump into, you know what? Always been a dream of mine. I love the idea of being a pilot. I love the idea of being a space cowboy. I'm going to jump into the shoes of Wash from uh-huh. Firefly. Uh, uh-huh. because I don't think I'm as mercurial as Mal, but I'm definitely as stupid as Wash. <laughs> <laughs> Minus oh. minus the whole part where he gets spoilers, but like, it's like <laughs> ten years old, where he gets impaled by a giant freaking log. Oh, minus that, that part, still hurts. I'm all in. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh uh, why? why? Yeah. It's just like so cruel. Yeah. So cruel. So cruel. Mm-hmm. Oh, poor Zoe. Yeah. yeah. That's it. You're hired. <laughs> you you want new host? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. I'm on. Let me know. Let me know my hours. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we can find time. <laughs> <laughs> all right katie katie question because I'm... uh yeah i've got a i i'm curious okay. about what you what your favorite piece of like flawed media is like Ooh, a, like a piece cool. of media that you watch and you're like i see a thousand pieces that are wrong with this but i also cool. love it dearly kind of because of those as well as in spite yeah. of them yeah um uh transformers oh wow uh, oh my yeah. god yes <laughs> but also transformers too and Transformers 3. Mm-hmm. Mm. This is the hill that I will die on. <laughs> They're excellent movies. They do exactly as intended on the box. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I yeah. will, yeah, 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 I'll defend them to the death. I will go there. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good. I watched, I had, I had like, I'm pretty sure I had like a pirated VCD. Oh no, I shouldn't have say that on the camera. <laughs> I could beep you out. Beep. Watched, watched Transformers, yeah. <laughs> and I just watched that, I watched that a lot. I watched that a lot. The, the first Transformers was actually genuinely a good movie, I, yep. I believe. Um, it, it didn't go so well after that. But you know what? They were fun and they were big and they were satisfying in a way that, that a lot of films uh, the, the weren't. <laughs> I agree. Like, come on, yeah. the special effects and the fights in there are just yeah. like... Yeah. And they just lent into the silliness of it all. Yeah. And it was super problematic. Everything about it was problematic. <laughs> yeah. <And> like, yeah. <laughs> Although I, w- I will say that Bumblebee was a really good movie. Like, yes, I was genuinely surprised by yes. that. <laughs> Do you know Absolutely. why? Yeah. It wasn't directed oh, by Michael Bay. <laughs> yes. Ooh. Well, I would defend Michael Bay to the death, too. Excuse me. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Katie went. It, it was actually a surprisingly good movie. Oh, yeah. I've heard like really that. good things about it, yeah. yeah. Have you watched it? I haven't gotten around to it. I do want to. It's it's oh. a, It's... It's on the very long list of things that I'm like, I'll watch that at some point, and then I don't. Ever expanding. <laughs> ah, Katie, Katie. What's the series that you're orbiting? Right? What are you just watching over and over again right now? Oh, uh, I've gone back to Peaky Blinders at the moment. That's oh, the one I've watched. Right. I, I, yeah. I, I, I was like, okay. oh, we're not getting season six this year, so I have to rewatch yeah. the entirety of the show up until that point instead. Keep it fresh. Keep it fresh in the memory. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I watched. Ooh. There are so many things that I rewatch. One of them is like the classic Friends. It's just yeah. oh, Friends is great. Come on, Friends is comfort food. Yeah, yeah. it's it's Friends comfort. Uh, yeah. But but I also like to go back to Merlin, BBC's Merlin. Oh yeah, which is oh, also wow. just yeah, that's a deep cut. Yeah, that's 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 back in. It's, it's back it's, in the day. Come on, it's just so good. <laughs> it's so I fun. struggle. Yeah, I gotta go. I've got to go back and watch that again. I might give it another shot. It didn't pull me in the first time I watched it, mm. but yeah. I think what worked for me is what usually works for me in movies and TV as well, is that uh, the friendship that Arthur and, and Merlin had in there. It uh, was like, right. they had a chemistry that, you know, they had it outside uh, the series yeah. itself and it came through in the series and, and it just worked. <laughs> and I was like, I just love these two. Just, you know, just looking at them oh, yeah. and doing their oh, yeah. silly stuff. And when they went full silly, it was full silly and it was, yeah, it this was is good. True. I oh, do have sure. trouble going back to Merlin sometimes because it does have that element of like secondhand embarrassment, like cringe to some of the <laughs> when they go and I find it impossible to watch that. Like it just like I can't do secondhand embarrassment. It's why I've never watched The Office because I just don't think I'd be able to oh, get no, through an episode no. without because like my my fr- <laughs> my friends my best friend gets really annoyed at me for doing this. Like something like starts getting cringy or like that kind of really intense secondhand embarrassment. Yeah. I'll just yeah, pause yeah. it and just, just won't touch it for like half an hour because I'm like I have to <laughs> psych myself up for this. And she's like just just watch it and get through it. I'm like no I can't. I no, can't. no I'm not here. I can't. I can't, I can't do watch it. people embarrass themselves like this. I just can't. It's like, it'll be over in 10 seconds, but I can't do it. 
<laughs> not only that, but it's meant to be entertaining. It's meant to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <"Mm-mm." laughs> give me 10 minutes for me to like psych myself up so i can get through this you and then what? i'm watching tell- it like oh no i can tell you're a good person because of your your tv tastes now it's like you just can't bear to put people in bad situations it's like it's that thing of like oh they're about to embarrass themselves i can't do it <laughs> <laughs> oh god we, just- we, we might not be able to be friends then because i'm constantly embarrassing myself you'd have to pause <laughs> I'm clumsy as hell, Katie. So you know, fun fun fact <laughs> that we respect. never actually met with Katie. Oh yeah, like you know, Did we you... no, we, we That's wild. Hey, cool. We uh, we yeah, uh, we um, we connected over the course of you know pandemic last uh, oh. June. Yeah, so and yeah. then we we started this in September. So oh, we've oh, not cool. actually seen each other in person. Well, when you do, Lily will embarrass herself in front of you, and it'll be, oh, just... be just the start of something great. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably going to happen because I constantly <laughs> fall in my own feet, and then oh, no. you know all that stuff. Same. It's fun. Don't even worry about it. Same. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> the clumsy people exist, Katie. It's all good. There's an outtake, <laughs> There's an outtake somewhere in Shannara where I trip over my own cape. It happened. <laughs> Yeah. No capes. This, yeah, I was gonna say no capes. No capes. <laughs> That's the number four. She was right. She was right. <laughs> she knows what she's talking about. Uh, do, do you um have you been uh, watching anything in particular over the course of the pandemic? Have you had like a, uh, a show? No, nothing specific. I've been weirdly watching. I mean, I've been doing a lot of reruns of that Firefly, like I said. Um, mm. been uh, I've watched a, my favorite movie of all time is is Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. <gasps> oh, okay. Jane Black. Love that movie. <laughs> Um. Yeah, watched that a bunch. Um. You know what? I've been I've been watching a lot of, been watching a lot of two very specific things, but not specific at all. Uh, a lot of HGTV. It's like the housing channel here in the states. Huh? Just a lot okay. of like home renovations. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like, oh, I could put up some shelves. Uh, and then I've been watching a lot of anime as well. I don't know. I don't know why. I haven't. I, I used to watch a lot of anime as a kid, but then I sort of fell off it. But recently, yeah, I've just been delving back into that library um, again. I so, mean, uh, yeah. It seems like all good. of my friends at the moment are watching JoJo. And I'm like, do I need to start watching JoJo? <laughs> JoJo is wild, man. It's not my favorite. It's not my favorite. But uh, it is, it's, it's pretty intense, actually. JoJo is pretty intense. Yeah. <laughs> like, they start talking about stuff. And I'm like, I literally, like, I don't even think if I watch this, I'd, I'd be on <laughs> If fully understanding it, what's happening. No, I don't even fully understand. I, 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 I honestly, I don't actually watch JoJo because it's just too <laughs> obtuse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair. Fair. I, I say this. I've watched. Oh, I took grand total of three animes, and two of them were Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> oh, because <laughs> I watched Full Metal Alchemist, yeah. and then I watched and then Brotherhood. And then, uh, the Brotherhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brotherhood's great, though. Yeah, yeah. it is. I do love so. Brotherhood very dearly. <laughs> It's yeah. really good. It's really, really yeah. good. Um, I had another weird question and I lost oh, it. Me, please. Uh, but uh, oh, I, I will find it, it quickly. I will. I will. I've, got, I've got a vamp. Um, uh, oh, God, I'm so bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I was going to say earlier when we were talking about Merlin that Merlin was the show that we watched on Saturdays when Doctor Who wasn't on. So that was kind oh, of like, that's where right. I have the associate because it was the Saturday night yep. big BBC show. And yep. I was like, right. I noticed the TARDIS right. behind you. So I was like, I see. Uh, yes. <laughs> Wife is also a Whovian. Yeah. So, uh, ah, yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Stitch. It's, it's, you know. We're a nerdy household, man. We're a nerdy that's, household. I was saying the best that's, thing ever. That's the way to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the only way to be. Uh, it wasn't. Well, it wasn't a weird question, as it turns out. It was a normal. Oh no. One. Yeah. That's okay. Well, hit, me, hit me with this. Hit me with a normal question. Yes. I will be the judge of how normal it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know if you can actually answer this or not. So if you okay. can, you're just gonna do. I can't. Right. <laughs> okay. uh, so I discovered something on one of the posters of fucking and the Winter Soldier. Uh, behind i think it's behind sam uh in in the star you can uh-huh. i i think you can see the hungarian parliament in in budapest uh-huh. and i was wondering if you can answer that did you guys shoot anything over here in hungary because i am in hungary by the way oh cool nice nice oh 
I don't know. I love I love Budapest. Uh, I can neither confirm nor deny. I will have to do this. Mm. <laughs> Maybe I don't. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, amazing, amazing work there. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that I... is intense. You know, it's it's marvelous. So you have to look for Easter eggs. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. They're, everywhere, they're like posters, promo pictures. It's Easter everywhere. every day with Marvel. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, and then the other question yeah. is: since yeah. I know, uh, I think kind of for a fact that you're also as big of a Captain America fan as I am. <laughs> I mean, I love your necklace, by the way. That thank you. It's here as well. Cool. Oh wow! Wow! Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. I, I have it tattooed as well. I love, Amazing. I love Mike and and, and Bucky and you know. That's it's, cool. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's especially uh, what you wrote in your tweet. Uh, yeah. It did help me through a hard time as well. So when you wrote about that, I was like, ah, <laughs> the fears are back. It's coming back. It's all good. Don't cry. Yeah. I cried well, uh, because I I cry on everything. So it's it's all good. <laughs> I was I was way out of sorts when I wrote that as well. It was just it was sort of, sort of verbal diarrhea. I didn't. I sort of sat down and I was like, I'm going to write a short post. And then 16 <laughs> tweets later. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, no, it was cathartic. It was yeah. very cathartic for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have to know your opinion mm -hmm. about John Walker. Oh. I don't think I can say anything about this either. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll go as far as this latest episode where... Mm -hmm. um, he brutally murdered one of my friends. Yeah. Mm. Really brutally. I mean, no one yeah. else is a lovely, lovely person. I, I, I and with the shield. I, and with the shield. I will say, watching, for me, I mean, you read, you read the thread and you know how much him and that shield mean to me. Yeah. I think this, was, this is intentionally, of course, this strikes a chord, a discordant chord with all of the Marvel fans seeing him mm. stand there with the shield bloodied just at the bottom and it's there it, it, it takes the air out of whatever room you're viewing it in um yep yeah yeah it just just saps you man because because that is the symbol of the best of us um lowered to something yeah uh it, it's it's not a nice thing to look at and that's pure that's perfectly intentional um yeah yeah that, that's 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 as far as my thoughts can go on it is like that was that was that was like oof. Yep. i thought that yeah. that episode in particular was pretty spectacularly directed oh uh, uh, like like i thought the the oh. subtlety of like um showing that he had taken the serum was mm. like spectacularly played out like the way he threw it into the wall and you're like oh that was intense Wait, hang on a second, and then you get to the point where he finally like bends the pipe and you go, "Oh no, he's done it! He's done it already!" Oh god. Yeah, I'm I am now in some trouble here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, they did they did really really well putting all that all that stuff together. Um, there were, there are so many threads that they just oh um, they, they shout are... out yeah. yeah shout out to Kari and shout out to our producer Zoe who just um. It, I know, they juggle all these things and they don't drop yeah. the ball. It's great. Yeah. Oh, it's it's a really good show. Like yeah. you know, it it started off great, uh, and and I think maybe the second episode was a bit slower than we sure. expected yeah. it to be. But yeah, then yeah. they just picked it up again, and I was like, oh, yeah. yep, this is. There's a lot of setup that goes into sort of like a six hour mini um, mini movie series, basically. Yep. <laughs> so a little, a little more wind up time, I think, than than you'd be accustomed to in a regular film. The first act goes on a little longer. But yep. uh, yeah, it's worth it because the stuff they set up again, like you said, it all works with the characters and the themes. It's complex. Very well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and also, we have to give all the respect to Wyatt Russell because he's doing an oh, awesome job. He's a so lovely good. guy too. He's a gentleman too. Um, really, really, really nice guy. Uh, just shock, shocking uh, <laughs> sometimes that some people can behave as poorly as they do on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the initial, we know what we're talking about. I won't go into it, but uh, lovely, lovely man, and I'm glad people are seeing him for a amazing actor Oof. Now, as well. Such a good actor, like and and you know they always say uh, we can go back to Game of Thrones where Joffrey and Cersei and you right. know yeah <laughs> come on but they, they were horrible they were too. They, yeah they, they I think people like horrible to the the I can't remember his name but the actor who played Joffrey as well like. Yeah. lots of flack as well and it's like no guys that's not 
that's, that's, Listen, I'm just I'm just setting it up for myself. I play a lot of villains, so I'm like, <laughs> this is why I'm like, hey, don't uh, just don't 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 beat me up on the street, please. Like, so, oh, but man, isn't it, it interesting is. that it's always the yeah. really nice people who play evil guys and girls, obviously. Yeah, yeah. it's because we're pretending. Yeah, no one's that nice. <laughs> 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 that's true <laughs> I, no, I, no. I either find it myself is. playing comedic roles or evil roles and I feel like they are signaling something to me and I'm like <laughs> I don't know why you <laughs> try to say that you want, me to, you want me to lean into this? Fine, I'll lean in <laughs> it's good that's to true. be evil, come on I truthfully really <laughs> think it is a thing of like uh, when people have that kind of good moral compass they get the place at acting and like in in mm. also in things like D, where you get the chance to like yeah. just sort of play in a space that you don't get to play usually because yeah. there's no consequences to that yeah. um or the consequences are, are safe because they're within a, fic a fictitious universe so you yeah. get kind of the chance to be like yeah. something that you wouldn't be usually which is um, nice I'm of the opinion that D and D with a good DM is the best, and if this is your goal, is the best acting exercise you can Oof. ever have. Um, Absolutely. You know, as long as you're not going too crazy with it and being like, "I'm a dwarf," <laughs> you know, <laughs> like if you keeping it within, like, then that's where the good DM comes in. Like, if you have someone who's guiding that ship and and servicing all of your characters and giving your characters moments, and you can pick up on those uh, on the mm. fly and, and yep. work with it you've unlocked well past like years and years of acting lessons i reckon yeah yeah i'm with you there yeah it makes sense uh yeah. and i i think for for a last question i would ask that did you ever do any comic cons or are you planning any, on anyone doing comic cons? oh comic cons yeah yeah i look i i love to i i go to comic con i go to a lot of conventions a lot mm. of the time i have to shout out my my wife's work she she works um part-time as a hobby with a, a dance team that does cosplay Ooh, uh, wow. and nice. they get hired by those conventions they they do comic con every year they do the comic con masquerade halftime oh, that is um, amazing. so they they do themed sets they did like an attack on titan set they, they did a x-men set they did a, you know, they, do, they do all the cosplays themselves mm. um and they're all like professional dancers uh nice. you know there's a couple there's there was a girl on it who was a lakers girl for a while and then there's you know we have cast members from the wicked tour and stuff mm. dancing oh, with them awesome. um so they are at conventions every year and I'm sort of there as just their support staff uh, sometimes. I'm there to run cameras for them and, and record their performances and I get to like wander through the halls. I love conventions. I mean, there mm. is, there's no one thing that can be said to be absolutely pure. And I know there's sometimes some controversy with certain pockets of uh, communities within the convention culture. Um, mm -hmm. But by and large, it's people who love things. Yeah. And I think that's great. Absolutely. And I love just being around that. And if I if I could do conventions, I would love to. I think off of this, we probably will. Mm. Um, I'd love to, you know, jump up and be on some panels and like just shoot the shit with people. You know, I, I love doing that. I love meeting people and and especially again, just people who share the love of this stuff. Because it doesn't matter. Sure, I was in the universe, but I just like my love for the character came first as well. Yeah. And that's the level I like to connect with people on. There's nothing. I, I firmly believe there's no. There are boundaries, of course, between fan and actor that have to be to keep people safe. Mm. But in terms of a human experience, I'm assuming all parties involved are knowing where the boundaries are. <laughs> you can <Yes. laughs> absolutely like have a lovely conversation. Like there's yeah. some actors who are cynical about it. They're like, oh, we're just shilling ourselves out and like um, whatever. And they're, they're a bit like the conversations are canned and I, I'm not. I'm not there, man. I'm there to have the same conversations that I have at conventions every year. Just maybe I'm behind a table. You know yeah. what I mean? That's why I'd love to do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. well, if you ever come to London, we're going to come and find Hell you yeah. on, a, on, a, on a Comic Con because, hey, come on. I will be there once this is all over. Yeah. Once this is all over. <laughs> Please. <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Just Soon. go away. Soon. Go away. We, we need our life. Like. Well, they, they are planning the first conventions now, so... I yeah. saw, yeah, yeah, yeah. Australia's planning some too. Supernova's coming back, I think. I think I might, I might not be Supernova, but yeah, there's a few. There's yeah, a few. there's a few that already like maybe they pushed it back like to September or something like that. But mm -hmm. maybe, hopefully, yeah, 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 yeah we'll hopefully. see. Let's yeah, see. Everyone um, get on board, do your part, do as Steve Rogers would do, take the yes. serum, and we'll all be good. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Desmond, thank you so much for coming. Oh my god, thank you so, so much. much. This has been I loved it. 
had so much fun. This, this was, too. you are our new host, uh, you know, <laughs> the talk to you <laughs> come back just anytime. Come back anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I'll guess, I'll guess through a couple. Oh, yes. There you go. Perfect. Um, really appreciate it. Guys. And uh, where, where can people find you on the mm -hmm. big world of social media? Oh, goodness. Um, oh, I hate social media. But yes, it is It is the tool I need it. I need it to live and work uh, yep. now. It is very important. Um, you can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Des Chiam. That's D-E-S-C-H-I-A-M, uh, M for Mary. Um, on Instagram and Twitter. Come hang out. Shoot yep. the shit. I hang out sometimes. I respond to DMs sometimes uh, when I'm not late. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah. There you go. Brilliant. That's how we arranged this because you yeah. saw my DM. Actually, yes. You, you... Yeah, I, I only checked them like once every two weeks or so. So I'm very happy that I checked it like then. I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I have to reply. I have to like, 100% have to reply to these guys. Yeah, yeah. I do that. I just sneak, sneak up on people. I'm like, ah, these DMs are open. <laughs> well, done. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I take it. Uh, and once again, thank you for watching, listening, and you know how you, you are reaching us. Uh, find Desmond on the socials and watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Watch yes. the Shannara Chronicles. That's yes. my personal, you know, uh, advice to everyone because it's great. Um, and oh, one more question: uh, What is your next project? Can you tell us a little? Oh, I do have one, but I can't say anything about it. It's very, very nerdy, and I love it. It's my <laughs> first time working in the format. That will be a little hint. Um, but that's it. That's all okay. I want to say. We'll I take it. it. Yeah. We will take it. Yep. Um, still a pandemic. Uh, wear your mask. Uh, sanitize your hands and keep yes. the distance. And yes, yes, yes. Get vaccinated when you can. Yes. Very important. And once again, thank you, Desmond. This was so much fun. Thank you, guys. Honor. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. Bye. -bye.